What a grandstand finish this is. He missed it! He missed it! And it's on the ground! He missed it! Well, on the hill for his birdie. Two birdies and an eagle on his card so far. Four under. So he knocks that by by just a bit. So this now back up the hill for his par. Oh no. Well, he has this now for his bogey. Remember what happened here yesterday? He had that four footer for his par and he ended up four putting. Oh, and it looks like he's going to do it again. He's got that left now. He's got a longer putt now for. Can you say history putt. doesn't get into players' heads? I oh, mean, oh gosh. Well, it sticks in your head, as they say. When you have good thoughts on a hole, you birdie it. The first three rounds, you birdie it. The fourth round, when you have some problems, it does stick in your brain. And a four putt yesterday for a double. the savior of Italy throughout this tournament. He's missed it, and Brazil win the World Cup. What we just watched were examples of choking. If you're an athlete or a sports fan, you know about choking, or perhaps you even experienced it yourself. After choking, athletes often describe it as feeling apprehension or anxiety, nerves or tightness before a crucial moment in the game. We want to try to reduce these feelings and reduce the chance of choking during a game situation. One such way we can do that is through a pre-performance routine. Now, a pre-performance routine is a guided activity that an athlete does before an important moment in the game, such as a penalty kick, a free throw, or a putt. What's important is that it is actively guided. If in baseball, every time I set up, I adjust my helmet, and I adjust the wristband, and then I get prepared for the pitch. That is a setup routine if I do not think about it. However, a pre-performance routine has different steps that you focus on during the setup. We have first, the optimization of arousal levels. You can also think of these as stress levels. We have behavioral steps, attention control, and keywords. So the optimization of arousal levels, if before a free throw, I feel like my heart rate is skyrocketing and it's going too fast or that my hands are shaking. These might be breathing techniques or other techniques to calm myself down. However, if I feel that I'm not engaged enough to complete the activity well, then I might jump or move around to get the blood pumping. Behavioral steps are steps that I'll take to get engaged in activity. So for the free throw example, I might dribble or bounce the basketball just to get the feel of the basketball in my hand before I shoot. Attention control is focusing your attention on what's important for the task. For that free throw, I might decide to focus my attention on the rim because that's where I need to shoot. And finally, keywords are words that are important for the execution of the free throw or whatever activity you're doing in your sport. These are only a few words long, short and simple. So for example, in the free throw, I might think follow through. And I'll say follow through before I do my free throw. What's great about pre-performance routines is that they are individualized. So you can take them and individualize them for whatever sport you're playing, whatever your needs are. So you can decide whether you need to raise or lower your arousal levels, what you need to focus your attention on, what your keywords will be, and you can change these later depending on what changes in your performance. Also, you can change them based upon your sport. So now that we have the idea behind a pre-performance routine, Let's go outside and I'll show you guys how to create your own. So now I'm going to show you how to create a pre-performance routine using my racquetball serve as an example. The first step is optimization of arousal levels. Normally during crucial moments in the game I feel nervous and tight, so to reduce these feelings I'm going to take two deep breaths. Next I'm going to bounce the ball three times for my behavioral step. Then, during these bounces, I'm going to focus on the ball because the ball is the most important part of my serve. And often during the serve, I fail to stay low enough and bend my knees. So during that, I'm going to say stay low as my cue words. So what it looks like in action is like this.
stay low. And there you have it. We just created a pre-performance routine. So as we just saw, I created my own pre-performance routine for my racquetball serve. I optimized my stress levels. In a game situation, I'd be normally too stressed, so I focused on taking three deep breaths. I took my behavioral steps. I bounced the racquetball to get the feel of the ball in my hand. Then I focused my attention on the ball because that is the most important part for my attention in the execution of the activity. And then in terms of executing the activity, important for my movement was stay low. So before I started, I said stay low, and then I served. So y'all just saw how I created my own pre-performance routine. So hopefully you guys learned something, and you can take it forward and use it in your own sports.